So there was a lot of new information that we received at Gamescom Day 1. And in particular, one bit of information that we received was the weapon controls for all 14 weapons. Even though the controls aren't very detailed, this still gives us a bit of insight on how these weapons work compared to the previous Monster Hunter games. So in this video, I will give a brief analysis on these new controls for the Sword and Shield, as well as analyze the tiny bit of Sword and Shield gameplay that was showcased in the developer livestream. Now if you want to see all the new weapon controls yourself, I'll have a link to that in the description of this video, but before I get to the Sword and Shield specific weapon controls, I want to look at this page on focus mode. So it was probably expected, but it is now confirmed that you can activate focus mode by simply holding L2, and to perform a focus strike, you additionally press R1. Now normally pressing R1 will sheath your weapon, so this means that focus strikes won't conflict with your weapon's regular attack which is nice. Still gonna be interesting how we'll be attacking and rotating the camera at the same time. Seems like clawing might become a thing in wilds. Okay, now let's take a look at the Sword and Shield page. The first thing I want to point out is the new actions box on the upper right. So the attack at the end of the Sword and Shield weapons overview trailer is called Charge Chop, which is a strange name considering this is more of a plunging thrust type attack rather than a chop. Regardless of the name, the description says that hitting a soft spot in a monster's hide will allow you to deal multiple instances of damage. So it appears that if you want the multi-hit portion of the charge top to activate, then you'll need to hit a monster part with a high enough hit zone value, kind of similar to the powered up true charge slash if you know what I'm talking about. As for how to use charge top, you hold both triangle and circle during a combo, or rather seemingly after almost any other attack. We'll see what I mean by that later when we check out the Sword and Shield gameplay, but since the Sword and Shield has no gauges or cooldowns or recharging or anything like that, uh, this move is probably spammable. Now ideally, I would like this attack to be a final attack you do as a monster is getting up from being toppled. My biggest worries are either that this move's DPS is so bad that it's just completely useless, or this move is so busted that this is all the Sword and Shield players will ever do, since it's so spammable. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, moving on to the actions on the bottom. It's not very detailed as I said before. I think these controls are meant for the people at Gamescom who want to play the demo just so they can get the ball rolling a little bit. Regardless, there are some bits of information we can gather here. Under basic actions, we see triangle as standard attack and circle as special attack. Those don't really tell us much to be honest. Triangle plus circle is advancing slash, don't know if it's going to be world's advancing slash or horizon's advancing slash, but it's nice to see that move return. Perfect guarding is a confirmed thing for the sword and shield, and the spinning reaper like counter attack is just called counter slash, hoping counter slash will be decently powerful. R2 plus triangle is sliding swipe, which I'm assuming it's just sliding slash but renamed. In the previous titles, R2 plus Triangle was Rising Slash, and even though Rising Slash looks like it can still be performed after certain moves, not being able to perform Rising Slash out of guard is actually a little tragic, considering how integral it was in the previous titles, even the older generations. I'm not confident that Sliding Slash can make up for the usefulness of Rising Slash, so tentatively I see this as an overall nerf. Now onto the combo actions, we see that pressing triangle and circle during a combo is round slash, so it's nice to see that this is confirmed to be back. I'm hoping that it will be like Ryza's round slash, where you can aim it in any direction and continue to combo off of it. Back and circle during a combo is the back step. Pressing triangle during the back step starts perfect rush, and holding circle during the back step is charge slash with the typical follow-ups jumping slash and falling bash. As I already mentioned in my previous video, make Charge Slash good again, please. Anyways, those are the Sword and Shield controls, but we're not done quite yet because during the developer livestream, we got just the teeniest glimpse of some real Sword and Shield gameplay. And even though it's not much, we at least have a button guide on the top right corner of the screen, and that's what we're going to look at. After the initial jumping slash, we have four options displayed on the button guide. The one in particular I want to point out is the confirmation of Lateral Slash. I'm going to assume that Return Stroke will be there as well, but I'm not sure if we're going to get the full Spitting Reaper combo like in Rise. 
Now instead of continuing the combo from the jumping slash, we see some of our options in neutral and in focus mode. Notice the little reticle in the center of the screen. This is probably just a subset of your possible moves here because you can only fit so many things in that little space, but otherwise, what's listed here is pretty standard. Next we see options out of chop, and there you can see the second thing listed there is charge chop. So yeah, you can use charge chop very quickly. Now again, this is probably and hopefully just a subset of possible moves after chop because round slash isn't listed there, sliding swipe isn't listed, and the new strafing attacks aren't listed either. But anyways, Tokoro-san chooses to roll after the chop, where you see two options, rising slash and backstep. Now in World and Rise, you can just perform a backstep without holding back on the left stick after a roll, although here the button guide says that you do have to hold back on a left stick. Hopefully that's not the case. Moving on, a little after Balarhara roars, we get to see some options from guard. We have sliding swipe as the triangle option, so that means rising slash from guard is confirmed dead, rip. We have guard slash as the circle option, although we don't get to see what it looks like. Kinda interested to see how they handle guard slash considering that perfect guard exists now. Maybe it'll go back to being trash, who knows. We have the ability to use items with square like usual, but there are two things that really really concern me about this list of moves during guard. Uh, one of them more so than the other. Pause the video right now and see if you can guess one of them. Okay, well, if you're looking at this list and you're thinking, where is backstep? Then congratulations, you are correct. The backstep from guard is so good. It's the best way of using the backstep, both for iframing since you don't need to preemptively throw out an attack, and for accessing perfect rush the quickest. It was listed in World's Button Guide, and there's certainly room to include it in Wild's Button Guide, so to see it not listed there is making me nervous. I'm praying that you can still backstep from guard, or else it might just be the biggest nerf to the Sword and Shield. The other concern I have is that evading or rolling is listed here, although I'm willing to forgive this one since it wasn't included in World's Button Guide. But yes, rolling during guard was useful for simultaneously unsheathing the weapon and closing distance at the same time. It was very useful in World because the claw uppercut, maybe not so useful in this game, but I like the option anyways. Oh, and as I'm writing the script for this video, I thought of another concern I have with guarding. Because in the previous games, you could perform any action from guard nearly instantly, and that allows for many great things like instant backsteps or pseudo draw attacks. But in Wilds, the Hunter has the circular motion of the shield for the perfect guard. But will this animation get in the way of performing actions from guard instantly? Well if it does, we can throw all of my previous concerns in the trash. Because what's the point if you can't perform any of those actions from guard instantly? Oh man, now that would be the biggest nerf to the sword and shield. Okay, I'm digressing a bit here, but really there isn't too much left on the Sword and Shield gameplay here. Tokoro-san just lets go of guard, rolls again, and sheaths, and that's about it. But we are still not done because as a bonus, there is one small clip from the third trailer featuring the Sword and Shield right here. Now based on the braced stance with the shield and the zoomed in camera, I am willing to bet that this is the Sword and Shield's power clash, but we'll have to wait to confirm that. Not sure if the Sword and Shield will have a offset attack either. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Maybe by the time this video gets published there will be some Sword and Shield gameplay floating around somewhere. Hopefully the player is a Sword and Shield veteran so some of my concerns can be alleviated. Maybe one already existed, but oh well. Okay, I'm done talking. If you have anything else you want to add, leave a comment down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.